What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller, and in the watch world, well, there seems to be a bit of an elephant in the room. And I'm not referring to myself. <laughs> Why do I always do this to myself? Rolex has made a statement about their product shortage, and, uh, well, it's, um... It, it, it meant nothing. It is 1.11 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, guys, it's, it, this is just super disappointing, but at the same time, we kind of expected this, or we should have. I mean, is Rolex really going to allow themselves to take the brunt of people's anger uh, over their pretty much, I mean, long-term product shortages? Like, I don't know what the catalyst was recently for Rolex to now break their silence. I mean, they should have been saying something, I don't know, four years ago when people started realizing you can't get anything that you actually want at a Rolex AD. I'm not kidding, dude. J just reading this statement has made my blood boil. It's made me like sweaty and angry and oily. And I just, I honestly need some skincare products from Tiege Handley. That's right guys, special thanks to today's sponsor, Tiege Hanley, uncomplicated skincare for men. So guys, I'm a simple dude. You know I'm not the most like stylish, fashionable guy. I have a beard and uh, you know, pretty much the only thing I do when it comes to grooming is buzzing my head and cleaning up my beard once in a while. However, these lights and all the electronics that are in this little office get kind of hot and that has done a number on my skin. And this is where Tiege Hanley has come into play. Guys, again, when I say an uncomplicated skincare system for men, that's exactly what it is. And Tiege Hanley has full product systems that range from $25 all the way to $45. And it's not like you're only getting one product per order. No, at minimum, you're getting four products. Check out this box that I just cracked open. We have things for your hands, moisturizing lotion. You have your daily face wash, which is, uh, you know, very helpful, again, for someone who might have kind of oily skin or perspires a lot under the bright lights of show business. You have your morning moisturizer, you have your PM moisturizer, and uh, again, that's simple. You have your two time a week facial scrub, and again, on the bottle it says two times per week exfoliation. So they just make it super, super simple. You have your eye cream and super serum. Guys, although we might like complicated watches, we don't need our skincare routine to be nearly that crazy. I want you to look good. I want you to feel good. I want you to take care of your skin and I want you to check out Tiege Hanley. Click the link in my description below and support the sponsors that support me. And I promise you guys, you will have beautiful glowing skin and uh, you don't even need to tell anybody that you have a skincare routine. I'm not kidding. You can, it's, it can be between us. We're men. Oh God. So special thanks to Tiege Hanley for sponsoring this episode. Let's go complain about Rolex, yeah? So Rolex's non-statement, that's what I'm going to call it, because uh, when people realized, oh, Rolex is breaking their silence, we thought there was going to be some really interesting information. Rolex being like, hey guys, this is what's going on. This is why we can't have any of our watches available when you want them. Hey, don't worry about it. We're so thankful that you guys are still clamoring to get our products and we really do value our consumers and we really really do want our consumers to have our watches because we love the brand equity that we've had and we want, we want goodwill amongst you people. But no, they had to pass the buck, dig themselves into a deeper hole and then block anybody that wants to communicate with them further. Yes, that's, I'm serious. Rolex shortage, Rolex shortage, Rolex shortage, there's a Rolex shortage, yeah. So guys, upon looking at my notes, um, I, I, I don't want to get it twisted. It's not that Rolex came out with the statement and then blocked people from questioning further. Um, it's that people tried to ask Rolex about their Rolex shortages. They were blocked essentially. And then when Yahoo made their own report about the Rolex shortage, then Rolex felt the need to respond with a written statement. Like why Yahoo? 
Why was Yahoo the catalyst? Who goes on Yahoo anymore? But according to businessinsider.com, Insider has tried repeatedly to seek comment on past stories, referring to Rolex shortages, but the company has been non-responsive. It does not offer any publicly available press contact information and attempts to reach out using traditionally formatted media and press email addresses at Rolex.com have been returned with a notice that the messages have been blocked. They go on to say that shortly after Yahoo Finance uh, made its own report about these Rolex shortages, the company uncharacteristically broke its silence and responded with a written statement that we're going to be talking about right now. However, <clears throat> again, if I or really anyone else like on Instagram or email or anything wrote to Rolex, it's not like they're going to respond to us. They're going to treat us like, like, if they were blocking the messages from Business Insider, they're, they're, they're not going to give a crap about us. So it seems like the thing everyone else is focusing on when it comes to this Rolex statement is the first paragraph, right? A supply and demand thing. Oh, that's understandable. Rolex says, the scarcity of our products is not a strategy on our part. That is a lie in my opinion. Our current production cannot meet the existing demand in an exhaustive way, at least not without reducing the quality of our watches, something we refuse to do as the quality of our products must never be compromised, excuse me. So they're saying, okay, we have this huge, enormous, insurmountable demand and our supply could never reach it unless we, you know, downgrade our watches and we don't ever want to tarnish the Rolex name by giving anything but the best to our consumers. Oh, you still love us, right? So guys, Rolex could have left it at that, right? That first paragraph. And it would have been better than if they kept talking, but it's always just one last thing that, that tarnishes the whole statement, right? People never know when to just shut up. I'm one of those people. It's always good, 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 bad, 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 bad. Like I get it, okay? If Rolex just left their statement to that first paragraph, we probably would still be complaining because when you go, let's say four, five years uh, and just be totally incommunicado, like you, there's no explanation for why you can't find any of these pretty common Rolexes at any of the ADs. And then you find out that these ADs are getting busted for selling them on the gray market. You have to complain, right? When Rolex says, oh, we just want to, you know, give you the best product possible and we just, we don't want to downgrade the product so the supply is not reaching the demand, we're sorry. Of course we're gonna complain. But not knowing when to shut up, they went on and said, and this is literally the last thing they said in their statement, Finally, it should be noted that Rolex watches are available exclusively from our official retailers who independently manage the allocation of watches to customers. It is not our fault, okay? It's, just, it's the AD's fault. It's not our fault. Don't I? Why are you looking at us? We just, we just make the watch. We make the watch and then the AD just sells the watch. We don't. Ta-ta. Yep, just wash your hands clean of this Rolex. Not your fault. Not like you're the ones vetting the ADs. Not like you're the ones supplying the products to the ADs. Not like you're the ones that have to certify the ADs. Not like you're the ones that literally are in charge of everything. The buck doesn't stop with the AD. The buck stops with you, Rolex. And listen, I'll be the last one to defend these Rolex ADs, all right? They're dumb and complicit in this as well. But Rolex, I get, I mean, they just proved they're even dumber. Guys, whenever I talk about a Rolex, whether it's one that I like or one that I dislike, and heck, when it comes to modern Rolex, there's more Rolexes I dislike than those that I like. But I'm a current Rolex owner. I own about five right now, right? Day Date, Bubble Back, Submariner, Explorer 2, uh, Date 1500. You can tell I am a fan of Rolex or what they used to be. But whenever I mention these watches that I own, whether it be in a review, a comparison, or a historical episode, there's always people in the comment section that will automatically respond to the word Rolex 
with the word marketing, right? They hear the word Rolex and they immediately say, oh, well, Rolex is all marketing. I mentioned Rolex here, the comment section says marketing. Rolex is just Rolex because of marketing. Oh, Rolex is just, you know, asking these prices because of marketing. Oh, Rolex just has incredible marketing and that's why they have the brand equity. Marketing, 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 marketing. Well, if Rolex has this genius crack team of marketers, who the f put out this statement? This is a joke. This is laughable. This is passing off any form of responsibility to these ADs, who again, are absolutely complicit, but I mean, the buck stops with Rolex, not these little guys. So yeah, people asked me about this during this Saturday's live stream, and of course, this is like the goings on in the watch world, so this is what everybody wants to talk about, but I understand not everybody can sit down for like a 60 minute live stream every week, so I'd rather just do this episode so that uh, people can devour it in an easier, uh, you know, piece of content, but it's, it's a joke and I'm right there with you guys. I'm complaining Rolex, uh, just refuses to hold any responsibility here. And it's a huge bummer. But as always, you leave me a comment and let me know what you think about this because I'm sure that you have some insight and perspective that even I don't have. And I learn just as much from you as you do from me. So again, leave that comment. It really does help my videos out more than you know. All right, guys, there you have it. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. Thank you for checking out all these funny uh, comedy shorts I've been uploading, these little Instagram reels. Uh, thank you so much for checking out my website, thetimetellershop.com. We just did a restock and we have some awesome merch. Stay tuned for the spooky merch coming out in spooky season, October. We do monthly merch designs. So uh, yeah, make sure to check out the website. Check out my car channel, T3 Time to Drive, and join the channel. Become a certified T3 bot, $4. 99 cents a month supports the channel and gets you access to that members only discord chat. All right, guys, I will catch you on the next one. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. And always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. And I'm not wearing a Rolex today. Hmm. So there. <laughs>